Okay, hi everyone. Um, my name is LaVonda and I'm with Generation Homeschool. I wanted to do a quick tutorial with you over Google Classroom. There's been a lot of talk about different online apps and programs that make homeschooling a little easier. And so today I want to walk you through how to set up your Google Classroom. So what you do first is you go to a Google browser tab. And then you're going to click on the Google Apps. And you may or may not have to scroll down. Um, I did when I first found it. It was down on the second part. But because we use it so often, it's at the top. So we have, uh, you just click on Classroom. And it's going to populate our classroom. Yours will ask you, you know, to sign up for it and put in your email and stuff like that. It's completely free. Um... One of the great things that I really enjoy about Google Classroom is it allows you the opportunity to, um, to do your lesson plans, to schedule your assignments, to keep track of what your children are doing, when they're doing it, and it allows you to grade. Um, I don't really use the grading feature on it. I have another program that I use. That'll be another vlog later. Um, but here we have, um, this is our classroom. And so you can see that we have different classes set up for different um, um, courses that we're learning. I created a class just for mom's notes for lecture simply because if there's something that I need to remind the students, I can put it on there and I can schedule it for that day. So let's, um, let's first figure out how to create a class. So you have this little, um, this little plus sign here. So you click it. And it will open up um, a menu so you can join a class or create a class. We're going to create a class. And you have to agree to Google's terms and conditions. Um, but then we have, um, after we do that, it will populate this screen. And so you would just type the name of the class. So we're going to say um, um, Greek Mythology. And then the section might be um, a certain year uh, or things like that, but we might go general history. And I never put a subject in here, a little too much information. Uh, we're homeschooled, we're not bound by all the regulations that public schools are. So you click create and then it will create the course for you in a moment there we go and it automatically takes you into the course but if you don't want to go into the course you just click over here to the menu and click classes and it'll take you right back to the um, to all of the classes and so here is the course but now let's say we're ready to get in that course we simply click it and it takes you into this course. From here, you have several different menus. You have stream, classwork, and people. This is your stream. This is where all of your assignments will show up uh, that you have planned and assigned. The classwork tab allows you to create assignments, ask questions, use topics, and put things in order. And then the people is how you add people to the class. Um, right now, I'm the only one in here, but I could invite students um, by typing their name or their email address. I don't want my children's email addresses shown, so I'll use mine. And you click invite. And it's not going to let me because of my domain. And that's okay. So, I just wanted to show you that's how it works. So, you would invite students. And then you go to classwork. And let's say we want to set up an assignment. We click create. Assignment, question, reuse post, or topic. We want to create an assignment. And here's where the fun really starts because you can do your lesson plan and your assignment all at once. So we're going to say day 20. Well, no, let's see. Today's day actually 21 for us. And we're going to put, um, I don't know, for fun, uh, read the introduction. Actually, that goes down below. 
Sorry, my Monday has flowed over into Tuesday. So, day 21 mythology. You can title it any way you want. I like to use day numbers because it just makes it easier to keep up with the number of the day we're on as opposed to the date. Um, so, I'm going to put for instructions, read the introduction, pages 8 through 9. And um, complete the I Know It worksheet. I'm just making this up. We don't study Greek mythology yet. Um, so then uh, you have your option to put in your points. Uh, you can make it 100 points. You can make it 50 points. Or you can make it ungraded, which is then a binary. Either they did the assignment or they didn't. You can make a due date for the assignment. We're going to put that it's due today. And if, let's say that I don't want this assignment to come out until after lunch, or if I'm scheduling ahead, maybe I don't want the assignment to come out until that Monday, um, I can go in and click schedule, and it will allow me to schedule the assignment to post. So it also gives you a warning that it must be scheduled before the due date. So I cannot make it due tomorrow, it has to be due today. But I can schedule a time that I want it to show up. So that is a really convenient tool that I use often. Um, we also have links. You can attach documents. Um, you can attach Word documents. You can attach Google documents. You can attach PDFs. I've not tried MP4s uh, or MP3s. Um, but here are uh, here's how you would attach it. And you can upload from your computer or desktop. You can upload from uh, items that you've recently uploaded. You can upload from my drive. Alright. And then there's also a link for Google Drive itself or, that you can use um, if you've got stuff there. You can upload from YouTube. And you can upload links to other websites. So let's say you've got, you found an online game that you want the kids to play for practice in multiplying fractions. You can uh, include that link and it will show up. All right. And so then you just click assign if you want them to have it now or you click schedule. I'm going to go ahead and click assign so that you can see how it shows up. And this is new. They made an update to it since I created all of our classes. All right. So now I can go to the stream and this is what your children will see. And here's the assignment. Day 21, Mythology. Okay? And then to see the assignment, you simply click it. And this takes you to the grade book. In the grade book, it shows that it's ungraded. And if the assignment had been actually assigned, well, it can't be assigned because there's no students yet. Um, but if there were students, it would show how many were assigned to it. And then it would show whether or not they turned it in. And the great thing about this feature is you can provide feedback. Let's say they turned it in and you don't necessarily want to grade it in Google, but you want to give them feedback on it. You can, um, when you when you check mark their name and click return, a box will populate that will allow you to uh, give them some feedback on the assignments. Let's say that they need to um, focus more on um, balancing chemical equations. Uh, so they're having a trouble having trouble with that you can give them additional feedback uh, or tips and maybe they just need a you did a really good job on that assignment I'm proud of you you can put that in there as well and constructive feedback is crucial for anyone you know even as adults we like to get you know constructive feedback so that is kind of the basics of Google classroom there's not a whole lot to it um, one of the features that I absolutely love for scheduling purposes is the um, reuse feature that it has. Uh, let me show you that real quick um, because a lot of time is lost just in typing out lessons in general. Um, being able to reuse a template makes it 
really great. Um, so the way I have my sixth graders spelling set up is in his textbook each day is lettered A, B, C, or D. And so depending on what day of the week it is, it corresponds to that letter. Today is day B. Uh, today is Tuesday, so it's part B of his textbook. And he has uh, to do lesson five. And so here's the assignment that he has. Uh, this is what his assignment is. But up here, I have already scheduled eight more days of assignment. So we've got the rest of this week and all of week six. Uh, week six is actually our review week. So um, because of the reuse feature, I can go in and reuse a template that I've already created and then um, just change the information that I need to change on it to make it more, uh, to make it a correct lesson for him. Um, and that's, I'm trying to think if I've missed anything to tell you, because Google Classroom, we, we love it. It does have a calendar feature, which is really great. You can see all of the assignments that are due for today, and then all of the assignments that were due yesterday. It takes it just a second to load, because we've got quite a bit of stuff on it. But here you can see that I've already got, um... The art assignment is due on Friday. We did it last night. Hope you had a chance to watch it on our Facebook page. We went live for the first time uh, through homeschool. So we had a lot of fun with our raised salt watercolor art projects. So make sure you check us out, Generation Homeschool, on Facebook. Um, but Google Classroom, the calendar, um, it's, it's convenient, but it's to me it, it needs a little tweaking but you won't hear me tell them that because I'm afraid they'll tweak everything and then I won't like it anymore so um, you also can shortcut to your classes over here instead of going to classes and then clicking on it you can simply click on the one in the in the menu to the left um, you can also make announcements I don't know if you noticed that um, I, that's what I was going to talk about uh, let's say that you need to announce something to the class or to a student but you don't rem it hits you late at night when you're plugging in lesson plans and schedules and you need them to know it, but you don't want to go wake them up to tell them. And if you put it on a piece of paper, it's liable to get lost. So you can actually go in and post uh, announcements in Google Classroom. So uh, at the end of our unit review, um, typically every Friday he would have a spelling test on Spelling City. But because it's a unit review, he's already done all the words. So I'm going to go through each day and pick out the words that he had trouble with. And then on Thursday, he will have a writing assignment where he has to write each one of those words in his writing assignment to show that he's using it correctly. Um, some children are just not strong spellers. Some children, it takes a little while. My son, it took switching curriculum. Um, but it, it it can be done, so don't don't fret if your if your young one is having trouble spelling, just just stick it out. Try switching a curriculum. Um, in any event, it'll come, it'll come. Uh, but on Friday, uh, sorry, I lost complete track again. My Monday is repeating. Um, so he has an announcement on the 24th that there's no spelling that Friday. And that's, I'm not going to have him re-spell every word that he has learned since week one. That's ridiculous. That's, that's filling up his brain with, with stuff that he doesn't need, where he just needs to focus on the words that he had trouble with. And that comes in day 29. So the announcement says no spelling today. And at 6 a.m. on Friday, August 24th, that will show up in his spelling classroom for him. And then I'll have one really happy sixth grader who gets to skip spelling for a day. Um, and that's about it. And one of the great things is after the school year's over, you can archive your classes so that if you've got other children coming up in the ranks, you can go back in and reuse those lessons that you've already created. You may have to go in and change some of the information, change the due dates and things like that, but all of the all of the structure, all of the, the backbone, the spine of it is still there. And that's another reason why I like Google Classroom. So that is my tutorial for you for Google Classroom. Again, I don't use Google Classroom for the grades. I actually use this little handy program right here called Homeschool Tracker Basic, and that'll be on the next blog. Have a great day.